Hello everyone and welcome back to All the Crazy Things, my stock science playthrough with visual mods in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 and I am here with a rocket I intend to send to the moon. We will try to get into lunar orbit and get some science and then come back. I'll call this Arrow 3. So it's just a development on the Arrow 2 which I used in the previous video. Instead of having the little booster at the bottom, uh, the hammer, I'm using two thumpers which are throttled down. And of course we still have the swivel active because it's going to need to control things. Though, of course, uh, we do have the command pods reaction wheel as well. And I've got a thrust weight ratio of 1.63 at the start. And then the boosters go off and it's 1.33, which is just fine. And altogether the vacuum uh, delta V is 6,103. So I think that'll be enough. And without further ado, let's send Jeb. Uh, you know what? I need to hire some more, though. Any interesting names here? So, Lisner. Lisner? Lisner, fine. Carvin. Carvin's good. Uh, some of these are too hard to pronounce, like Nuoli? Uh, nah. Dudzi. That's good enough. Frodas. Uh, Samri. Straightforward. Cardas. Mm, Beasley. Beasy. No, that's Beasy. I'll always say Beasley. We'll hold off on that. All right, but Jeb is in dire need of extra stars, so we are sending Jeb. So, I think that'll do the trick. We just need to grab the science and come back. Let's see how it goes. Oh, the monopropellant. Fine, fine. I'll dump the monopropellant this time. But maybe it's lucky monopropellant. Hmm. It's a thought. But, okay, no mod propellant. I'm still keeping the full blader on the heat shield, though. Okay, it is done. SAS on. Throttle up. And... Go, Jeb. I'll put the little fins on, the fixed fins as well, just in case. Okay, we don't want any inclination or anything. So it's a little bit further north. Okay, booster set. And they're disposed of. Oh, I need to be more horizontal. Okay, separation. Okay, separation. And a terrier. We still have no way of recharging. I didn't put extra solar panels or anything. We do have them unlocked. But this should be doable without them. Well, that's getting a little bit high, so I'll coast. Okay, that's good enough. And we'll just plot for the moon. I was about to say wait for the moon to come up over the horizon, but I can plot. So, might as well. Okay, we'll go around retrograde and take this particular path. And ignition. Uh, this should be plenty enough to go to some other planet as well, maybe. Might be a bit before we actually get a window, though. Okay, 64 kilometers is fine. Bit inclined, but maybe we'll hit extra biomes like that. Out goes Jeb. Okay, we are in Mooner SOI. We can do a goo. Okay, keep. And then the experiments. Report. Okay, EVA report. Keep. Okay, we're good. Let's get to low over the moon. Or near the moon. Will 64 kilometers do it? I forget. Well, oh, 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 I went too far. Oh, shoot. Time warp. Okay, well, we're still making orbit, so it's fine. Okay. <laughs> I was going like realism overhaul time warp or something. Okay. 
We can manage it, it's fine. I'll just keep it to that periapsis, go up and come back in. Okay, we've made orbit around the moon though. <laughs> At least there's that. There's probably a lot of biomes to do too. But let's just get the basics. I thought I had it so that the Kerbals automatically get their experience points. Uh, Jeb doesn't seem to have the prograde retrograde option. Alright, so are we near the moon? Yes, we are. Okay, keep. EVA reports above the moon's twin craters. Okay. Twin craters. If you say so. Well, I guess these two. Let's see. Should have some other biomes around here. This is definitely not the twin craters anymore. Midlands. This should be a different crater. East Crater. Slopes. Maybe slopes. Nope, still East Crater. Ah, that was a little bit early. Highlands. Well, I'll take that. But if we're already on highlands, it won't be slopes. And this seems to be a different crater. Nope, it's Midlands right now. Lowlands. Northwest crater. Well, can't see anything over here, so I'm not gonna have Jeb pop out. How about these sort of ridges here? Okay. Anything over here? Still Midlands. Let me try again. Okay, no, it's very much Midlands, it seems. And I'm just gonna take that much. That seems good to me. We have a lot of Delta V, though. So if I wanted to do more... I mean, you don't even need Delta V to do more, but... We are not in bad shape. But let's just go somewhere else. Well, I'll take that and then pull the periapsis down once we get into uh, Kerbin space. And on we go. That'll be fine for now. Let's get into Kerbin space so I can bring it down. Okay, retrograde. All right, there we go. That's a fine periapsis for re-entry, and we have a thousand meters per second left. So yes, this system can go to other planets, and we should do that next. So goodbye to the moon. I think the chatter background sounds might be a little bit too forceful. Let's cut down on that. All right, uh, stage set. Kerbin looking good. Astronomer visual, astronomer's visual pack doing its job. Tape, ablator, ablating. 
Oh, too tilted there. Mod sure is very vulnerable when you tilt. But that's why I wanted Jeb to get the point so that he could hold retrograde. Okay, we're through the thick of it. And splash down. Okay, don't sink. Recover vessel. Recover vessel. Okay, 351 science all together there. And Jeb does get to level 1, finally. And, well, Bobcats... Let's see, if we're going to another planet... What do I want? Well, we can get rid of the solid boosters if I get the Bobcat and some decent tanks. Let's get the Bob Bobcat and some decent tanks. Uh, yeah. The ant engine, that'll be for landing eventually, especially on Minmus. Fairings could be a thing eventually. I don't feel any rush for that. It's not particularly my intention to do anything uncrewed, though eventually once I build large things it'll be inevitable that we'll have uncrewed modules being sent up. Got those fan blades. I did want to learn more about how to use those because I have not done so properly. But let's get let's get science first. I think I'll get the ant. And maybe just for completeness, I'll just fill in aviation and flight control here. And let's see about a Duna window. Just gonna time warp till it looks like a Duna window to me. Okay, that looks close enough, about 45 degrees. So, instead of this business, and Bobcat. Sea level 1.19 and 6,607 meters per second here. We'll call it... Well, it's a Titan engine. Fine. Uh, since they had Nyao there and it's a Bobcat, we'll go Neko one. Neko being cat in Japanese. You know... It'd be nice to have a recoverable launch vehicle, though. A reusable launch vehicle. What if we just went straight for that right now? These bobcats are surface mountable. I don't know if that surface is going to survive re-entry. But that's basically enough for orbit. But we need a controller. And then we will have to have comms and all that business, because I did enable that. Probably a reaction wheel would be good. Oh, that's small. Is that necessary? We can make it look better if I drag these down, I guess. Got two Commutatron 16s there. Well, 16 S's. Right. We want this end going down first. I don't have air brakes. That's one downside. We really need air brakes, I feel like. These are a bit big. And then parachutes. So. Got four tons of that. We've got four tons of tank here. Let's just call it 10 tons being the dry mass of this. And so if we want parachutes, I'd say at least six, maybe seven. But six is how symmetry works, so six it will be. Now we've got 3,765 meters per second. Maybe I can squeeze one more tank in. I don't know. Uh, at least the payload will be sure to get to orbit. Uh, maybe I shouldn't do the fins. Um, 
This could be dodgy. I want to make sure that this one drains first. And the heat tolerance on the Bobcats is 2,000. The tanks, 2,000. The fins, 2,400. Should be okay, right? Well, this is a Neko one, and we're going to find out. And we're going to have... Not Jeb, we'll get one of our other pilots, Frodas. Frodas will be the pilot for this one. Got too many scientists though, just because they had interesting names. Oh, you know what? Let's get solar panels. Haven't done Science Juniors at all yet. It's really hardly worth it to bring this down, it's just for fun. I mean, the first stage. Alright, SAS on, throttle up, and here go two bobcats. Uh-oh, that's wobbly. It's wobbly. Uh-oh. Because of the way it's balancing on that. Okay, you... I'll strut uh, to root part. Oh, that's a bent. Sort of auto-strutting, but alright. Maybe he'll give us some extra lift or something. Hopefully not in a bad way. Ooh. Could be in a bad way. <laughs> Alright. We should be safe from flipping. The friction though. Okay, I'm gonna coast a bit. Because we're going to overheat otherwise. I'd like a nice 100 by 100 orbit to come back from with the stage. Alright, that's about 100 by 100. And we have 123 left, but that's with the payload. Let's separate. Okay, Frodas is off. But for a little bit, I'm not going to pay attention to him. We'll try to bring this down and see what I've done wrong. <laughs> but comms is going to be a big thing. We, of course, want to get back to the space center. Probably the best thing would be to deorbit over the desert launch site. And that'd probably be the most consistent. But let's see how comms are for a stage coming back here. Seems pretty consistent so far. Looks like we've got good coverage along the equator with these surface mount Commutatron 16s. Yeah, they've given us consistent ground stations, so no problems. This one right there. And is there actually comms at the desert launch site, or should I do it here? This might be a good location. I'm right over that thing. All right, well, close enough. Let's go. Yeah, go to 30 kilometers and see where we end up. All right, 30 kilometers. So just a little bit past that particular place that we're communicating with. And we're down to 30 kilometers. Let's see how, how it is. Might be that we're too high up. Let's see. Feels that way. We'll end up in the ocean to the east of the Space Center. I should probably arm the parachutes now. And if I can, let's pump the fuel down to here. There you go. I'll be in the dark. Here we go. I think I enabled Plasma Blackout as well, so at some point I'm not going to be able to control it. But for now, I'm trying to keep it at retrograde. It's obviously not slowing down as well as a pod would. I think we're all the way to that eastern peninsula. Now we've got some overheating down there. Oh, we can just tilt our way through that. Ah, we lost comms.
Bet the parachutes are armed. Woo! A little bit loud, but uh, they popped out at 10 kilometers. Full parachute deployment brings us to 6 point... basically 6 meters per second. And we do have comms, I'll just take SAS off. 5.5 actually. So 6 was fine. And splash down and recover vessel before it smashes into the surface. It'd be, it'll probably be alright. So recovery in accordance with the rules of stock. Not that it matters because I don't have any budget at all. It's just because I can. So, yep, no, no funds to track or anything. Ironically, in career mode, I'm less likely to do that for some reason. But... Yeah, but that's because, you know, attaching extra fins and the parachutes and controller and all that business costs money anyway and time. So I don't do it. But there we are. Neko 1, let's try and send it to Duna. I'm not gonna do that particular recovery again. We'll try different things. Alright, there we have an encounter. I'll just do a mid-course correction to get it a little bit closer, even when we get there, it'll be fine. Okay. 1034.6. And go. And we are on escape. I think the rest... Okay, we do have an encounter. Maybe I can get it closer. Okay, the rest is on a mid-course correction. Oh, as far as the days go, I did copy my settings file, so I probably I got 24-hour days as opposed to the stock days. So you can see 25 days, 23 hours, so I do have that. Sorry about that. That might confuse a little bit. But that's baked into the settings, and I just copied the settings file over because I have my joystick setup. Well, I'd rather have an Ike encounter on the way in than on the way out, but the first thing is to make sure that we are in line with Ike sufficiently so that it's hassle free. But yeah, it's encountering after periapsis, which I don't need. That's also too close to periapsis. Okay, that'll be fine. 3.6 meters per second on the mid-course correction. Let's go. Once again, to interplanetary space, we can do some science. We certainly can't transmit any science back. Frodas is all on his own. No, no control over this mission, technically. Okay, keep experiment for the t temperature and the barometer reading in interplanetary space, crew report, then EVA, EVA report. Feel kind of small, yep, you would. And let's grab stuff. Ah, that's further out than I wanted. But I'll correct that when I get there. We have entered Duna SOI. Report. Barometer. Barometer. Goo. EVA. And get all the stuff. Now the radio burn. Radio in. Uh, there's Duna. And ignition. That seems fine to me. Let's get the near over Duna. Rodas is happy. Okay, capture burn. Ignition. I really don't need to bring it all the way down, surely. Actually, leaving it up so that we could get to Ike would have been better. But, for now, 
this will be good enough to get the goo and the other signs low over or near Duna and the crew report EVA EVA report I'm not gonna do all the biomes this time you'll save that for some other time you've got enough enough to bring home right instead we should see if we can encounter Ike oh I thought we were in a better situation than that okay 240 for that um, but we have to wait a few orbits to do it not thrilled with the orbit it leaves us in after this so we'll probably do a correction but anyway, quickly turn. Uh, SAS, SAS. EVA is all the time taking SAS off and burn. I really need to get waterfall stock configurations in here. I've got waterfall, just not the stock configurations because for some reason that didn't install on CCAN. So I'll have to correct that. But anyway, we have a pass at Ike, but not exactly what I want. Well, that has us crashing into Duna, but I can correct that at Apoapsis, I think. Let me just verify that Apoapsis comes first. Yes. So, we'll get close to Ike. And then it'll put us into this green orbit. But then at Apoapsis, I'll lift the Periapsis up to stay safe. And But we, we can do a little bit more to be flat. That will help when we try to exit Duna. Because we do expect to bring our Kerbal home. Alright, so we'll try that. 34.8. Duna looking good. Sparkly even. Looks like it's on fire, really. That atmosphere. Alright, so that's how it is. 35 kilometer Ike Periapsis. Okay, okay. And Ike Pass. So, we've used our goos. Got 40 for a temperature scan, 60 for the atmospheric pressure scan, report 25. And EVA. High over Ike, 40. Gather all the things. And now the low over log temperature. Log pressure. 84 for the pressure. Crew report, 35. EVA. Lowlands, 56. All right, then back out again. Again, not doing all the biomes right away. Right, that apoapsis, I'll lift that periapsis up. Oop, that should be good enough. And then at periapsis, we need to bring this to a Ike safe situation. I think below 2,000 kilometers is fine. Okay, so to the tracking station, I think. We want Kerbin 75 degrees behind Duna. <gasps> no, it says orbiting the sun. No, we got shot out by Ike anyway. Ah, oh, I thought it was safe, but it's not. It was not. It was not safe. No. Fine. Um, we're going to have to come back the hard way, I guess. I don't know if we have enough Delta V to come back the hard way. So at Apoapsis, will we have enough with 1,338? I mean, if we wait long enough, it'll eventually work out. What if I don't want to wait? Okay, we can get an encounter like that. We're not too bad off. Okay. 
Ah, the Kerbin system. So nice. We get spit out by Ike, and we can still make it back just fine. I'm just gonna go for my usual like 26 kilometers. Well, that's as close as I can plot it, but that'll be the goal. And that's in 28 days, the, the burn, so I'll just time warp with it here. 20 days of 24 hour days, so 80 Kerbin days. And ignition. Okay, let's see. We have an encounter. Oh, everything past that I can do when we get there. Alright. Rodas is going home. Okay, radial burn. Well, now that we're in Kerbin SOI, there's Kerbin. And we're going to bring it closer. Okay, 26, like I usually want. And we're just gonna see what happens. I'm not gonna try and use the remaining fuel to slow down, though we could. To soften the blow as far as reentry heating is concerned, but... Let's just make sure we can come back from other planets without such things. We have picked up comms with Rodas after a long time. And we're probably going to be splashing down at night. <laughs> I never really think about that. We could have flipped to the other side, probably. Off goes the stage. And it's not that fast. It's basically the same as from Minmus or something. Not that much different, anyway. All right, we have entered the atmosphere. Flame effects are active. Yep. A little bit of overheating and definitely trying to be retrograde. I think that's just the heat shield straight up. Oh, oh, nope. No, bad, bad pod overheat. They, they was trying to overheat the pod very, very suddenly there, and I did not appreciate that. What was that all about? Gosh darn it, stock. You're not supposed to be this way. I mean, I could probably just turn off SAS, but I sort of don't trust it. Well, now I don't mind turning off SAS. But, you know, when you turn off SAS, it sort of wiggles. And even that kind of wiggle might be enough to cause it to overheat, so. Alright, parachute. And splash down. Recover. 1,028 science earned. Certainly not as much as we could have earned, but that should do plenty. And Frodas is now level 3. Well, he gets to rub it in the face of both Jeb and Val. Alright, so... What I really, really want is the Hitchhiker Storage Container, the Science Lab, um, and the Survey Scanner. So right up here, let's just do that. And we should do scanning of the Moon and Minmus to decide where we're most interested in landing things. And we should start building a space station. Now, as far as docking ports are concerned... Um, miniaturization as the junior... We've got the nice solar panels here. That's 300. But the nice docking ports are here. So, that's... that's a lot. Okay. Well, I'll take the advanced construction. And I think I'll go with the big solar panels, because we want those. That unfortunately doesn't leave us quite enough for the standard docking ports. But maybe it'll be good to have our first module, because we'll have the science lab, we'll have the hitchhiker storage container, but we won't have do good docking ports, so we can't have our first module yet. We need to get a little bit more science. So, 
Instead of doing that, we'll send out the survey scanner first, get some more science from the moon, and then we will start building the station. So I think that's the plan for next time. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.